All right, we're going to go ahead and look at uh, how to find the antiderivatives of um, some functions, and um, we'll see here <clears throat> as you move on. Um, you'll see how finding the antiderivative um, helps to find the area under the actual area under curve, um, as well as um, you know other applications that we'll see. But we're going to start out by looking at the power rule for antiderivatives, <clears throat> and the power rule for antiderivatives. Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and start and by writing out what that looks like. So this sign right here, if you haven't seen what that is, that's the integral sign, a little squiggly thing. And the power rule for antiderivatives looks like this. So it's almost like the opposite of the power rule for derivatives. So if you have it set up so that it's x to the a power, this dx um, is representative of the widths of rectangles, like we saw from the approximating uh, rectangles. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about that, but it'll always be there. Um, what you do, is the antiderivative, what it is basically, it's a function that when you take the derivative of it, it will become this. So, you know, we, again, it's essentially the opposite of the power rule for derivatives. So what it looks like is this. You add 1 to the exponent to make the exponent x to the a plus 1. And you then put whatever you got for that exponent on the bottom, um, a plus 1. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put a plus c here, and I'll talk about that plus c in a second. <clears throat> so, um, and... <clears throat> Like I said, and, and we'll look at an actual couple examples because it's a little harder with this, but the idea of an antiderivative is when you take the derivative of whatever you get for your answer here, it should equal that. Okay, that's the idea of an antiderivative. So let's look at something basic here. For instance, um, x squared. So if we were asked to find the antiderivative of x squared, so what we would do using this power rule, since it totally fits into this situation, we have x to the a power, in this case a is just 2, the answer to this would be x to the third over 3. And then we have our plus c, and I'll talk about that in just a sec, like I said. So, again, what I did was I added 1 to the exponent to make it uh, the third power. I divided by that number, just like this power rule says up here, and I've got my antiderivative. Now, like I said, if I take the derivative of this, it should equal x squared. And it would, because I would just take the 3 down to the bottom, or 3 down to the front. It would cancel the 3 on the bottom, subtract 1 from my exponent to get x squared. So, that's why this is the antiderivative of x squared. All right, now this plus c thing, why do we put that there? Well, um, let's think of that. So, um, you know, let me erase it for a second here. And I said... You know, what we're trying to come up with for the antiderivative of x squared is a function that when we take the derivative of it, it will equal x squared. Well, the idea is, um, sure, this function would work right here, but so would this. The reason is because when you take the derivative of 1, it would just become 0. And so would, you know, this right here, x cubed over 3 plus 12. If you take the derivative of that, it becomes x squared. So essentially, any constant you place there, um, you know, when you take the derivative, will be 0. So, therefore, in order to take that into account, we put this plus c. And we'll see a little, in, you know, down the road how we'll solve for c um, if we're given initial conditions. But this is a very important thing to remember. Don't forget it, because you'll miss out points on <coughs> your tests. Also, on the AP test, there's very important times where you have to have that plus c. So, never forget that. <coughs> 